Hello, David Clark here from DVC, and I'm just going to take a quick look at an update for EDIUS 8.2. There's a couple of things in this update. First of all, there's some new features for the primary color corrector, and then there's some things to do with QuickTime for Windows. So first of all, let's have a look at the primary color corrector. What's new inside of this update is that you can add your own LUTs. So I'm going to grab a clip. Now to do this, I'm going to go to the source browser and I'm going to come to the GV browser section where I've got a little smart catalog made up of all the clips that I've done with the GH4. So this was something I'd already done in browser. It's nice it pops up inside of EDIUS. Just going to pop up into the window here and right click and say sort by date taken, which makes it easier for me to find stuff. And I'm just going to grab a clip and shove it onto the timeline. So here we have just a random shot of something in Munich when I happened to last be there. And I'm going to pop the primary color corrector on there. As you can see, it's flat. So it's filmed in the VLOG format with the GH4. And basically, I'm going to grab hold of the primary color corrector and drop it on there. And once you open it up, you've got the option here to apply a LUT that Grass Valley have put in, which then makes it look like a real image. But what we really wanted to do was to be able to load up other LUTs. Maybe we don't like the Grass Valley one, we want to have ones that we found elsewhere. You can now do that. So I'm going to put that back to automatic and instead I'm going to go to the destination stroke LUT setting and click on it and you've got the Grass Valley ones but at the bottom here you can see you've got other LUTs that I have added into the system. I can choose one of those and I get a different look to it. And I have to admit I prefer some of these to the way that the Grass Valley LUT works with my footage. To add them in, all you do is you go to this little cog, up pops this LUT settings box, and you can see all the ones that I've actually added in so far. And all I've got to do is click on this little button here, and then go off and find a LUT and add it in. So again, a bunch of LUTs here that I've downloaded off the internet, grab hold of one, click on open, OK, OK, and now you've got that LUT added in at the bottom, and you can apply that to a clip. This particular LUT is the one that I got from the GH4 website, which is the standard Panasonic LUT. Some of these other LUTs came from a Google search. I particularly like these ones that I got here, these Panasonic Vlog ones. I think they do some nice looks. I got a lot of LUTs from this website, where you can see there's a button here that says free LUTs, and you follow it down, and you can download a whole pack of free LUTs. These conversion LUTs were the ones that I actually used. And then once I downloaded it, I unzipped it. It gave me a bunch of folders like this. And I went to the one that says Cube and then went into one of these. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of different types of LUTs that they've made up. So, for example, you've got these Panasonic Vlog ones, which are the ones I've added in. You've got some Panasonic ones to use if you use the Cine D setting or lots of other ones for different cameras. These are just LUTs which are made up by the guy on this website and he's put them up there for free and you can find lots of free LUTs I'd suggest you go to this website and get them because I quite liked them but you can find lots of free LUTs all over the place just load up the cube file and then back in EDIUS you can add them in and then you can apply them to your footage and then of course you can do other bits of grading on it change the exposure of the shots uh, change the gamma all the kinds of stuff that you can actually do quite happily with the primary color corrector Another reason that you might use a LUT is, you know, this is just trying to take a raw clip and make it look like a regular clip. But another reason that you might use a LUT is to actually apply a particular look to a clip. Now, I've used one primary color corrector there to make the clip look normal. I'm going to grab another one and put it on there to add a look. I'm going to open it up, click on the LUT heading, and then pop down to the bottom. And I'm going to choose one of these. This one in particular, which is another one I got from that same place, what this does to it is it makes all the shadows look as if it's sort of greeny blue and all the, the face colors be a bit more sort of orange. It's a very familiar kind of look. I've seen lots of different movies and I've tried all sorts of different ways of fiddling with the sliders to get the same look, which I can do, but you can just download a lot from somebody and it does it. And as you can see here, all the shadows there have got a bit green. Uh, there's no oranges in here, but if there's a face, it's got a bit more orangey. And it's quite a nice look. And like I said, I've seen that in lots of movies. It's another thing you could possibly use this for. So there we are. It's now playing that back. This happens to be 4K footage on a 4K timeline, playing back with a couple of the primary color correctors on there. Now, with this kind of look, you actually might want to apply this to lots of clips at once. You know, I've got a whole bunch of different clips here on the timeline, and I've graded them in different ways. 
And now I might say, right, well, I've got them looking okay, but now I want to apply that same look to all of them. Now you could put the same primary color corrector on one at the time, but what I normally do is I just make up a new sequence, grab hold of my edit and shove it in there, grab hold of the primary color corrector, and then apply the LUT to that, which has now put that same look on all of those clips. So I'd basically just nest it. I can still go back to the originals and I can adjust the, the basic grade because whenever you're grading, what you tend to do is you try and make it look as natural as possible. And then if you want to add a look to give it some kind of feeling, then you apply another look on top of it. In my main timeline, I've got your basic color grading. And then from that, I stick it in another timeline and then apply the look to everything. You might also say, you know, that's it's a nice look I quite like it but it's a bit too intense well if you go into the primary color corrector you don't have any options here for toning down how that look is applied you know it's it's there or not but there are several easy ways in EDIUS to be able to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that and I've got two different ways of doing it one's with a mask filter the other is a thing called blend filters blend filters has been in there for donkey's years so you just click it throw it onto the timeline open it up and what you get is a window which lets you put a couple of filters on there. And I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to add a primary color corrector. And just come in here and apply that LUT. So I've now got that look applied to everything. But what the blend thing does is it lets you merge it between whatever this one is and whatever this one is. Now this second filter is nothing. So basically it's merging this filter with the original. If I drag the slider all the way over there, then I'm using 100% of this filter. If I drag it all the way over there, then I'm not using it at all. And of course I can drag it somewhere in the middle and I can apply the LUT a bit. So effectively what I've done is put the LUT in there and I can just kind of decide how much I want to apply it. Which is nice because you know you might get a look that you like but you think maybe it's a bit intense. That works, been in ages for ages. You can also keyframe it. So if I start this off at the bottom, it's kind of 100% this effect. And then as I move through the clip, if I stick in another point, I can then go 100% the other way. And that lot's basically sort of fading out so that the clips are still there, but that effect is just disappearing. Again, that's been in there for ages. That's one way to do it, works perfectly. Another way to do it is to use the mask filter. So just grab a mask filter, throw it on there, double click on it. And in this case, I haven't put a mask on there at all. You know, obviously the idea of the mask filter is I could draw a mask and I could have put an effect just inside the mask or outside the mask. In this case, all I want to do is semi ghost this LUT. So I'm going to stick on an outside filter, click on that little box and then find the primary color corrector, click on the settings, apply the LUT. So now obviously I've got the look going on there. And then I can use the strength here to decide how much it actually applies that look to it. So obviously down at nothing, no LUT, up at 100%, some LUT, somewhere in the middle, a bit of a LUT. And again, I just do that sometimes because I find I've got some nice looks, but I think maybe I want to tone them down a bit. Actually, both of those worked. I started off using the blend filters simply because I've used that for ages. And then it just suddenly occurred to me I could do exactly the same thing in the mask filter. So I use either of them. Of course, the other thing you can do with this kind of effect is if I put the primary color back on there again and then choose my LUT, is I can take that, which is basically that LUT applied, right click on it and say save as a preset, and then I can call this something like um, film, film grade or something. And now I've got a preset that I can just throw onto any clip whenever I feel like, or I can use that preset in other things. In addition to adding your own LUTs, Grass Valley have added in a few more of their own LUTs for different types of cameras. So this list here has got a little bit bigger. So the same Grass Valley LUTs are available here. And of course you could then add in your own at the bottom. Other nice changes to do with the primary color corrector is it's now accelerated by a graphics card. Now for years we've told people that EDIUS really doesn't use the graphics card very much, which is true. EDIUS does practically everything on the CPU. It only really uses a graphics card for some effects and also for plugins like BizTitle and HitFilm. But they're now starting to use the graphics card as well. So if I go up to the settings, system settings, and come into effects and then under color correction here, you can see I've got this heading that says primary color corrector. And here you can suddenly see I've got my graphics card listed, which is one of the fancy new NVIDIA 1070 graphics cards 
Little tick box means I am now using that graphics card to do my primary color corrector. What does it mean in practice? Well, it means if you've got a good graphics card, you can probably get a little bit more out of the system. Let's go to this part of the timeline where you can see I've got a couple of clips, one on top of the other. And again, these are 4K clips on a 4K timeline. And what I've done is I've also got one on top of the other and I've got a primary color corrector on both because they're both raw clips. So I'm kind of making this machine work pretty hard. It's a pretty good computer. This is actually a Broadwell E system, which has got um, eight cores on it. Hyper threading that goes up to being seen as 16 processors. And so, you know, it's making it work pretty hard. And I've got a couple of layers there of, of H.264 4K. And you can see if I press the play button and you look at the buffer, you can see, oh, it can happily cope with that. Now, one of the reasons it can cope with that is because the graphics card is doing the primary color corrector work. If I go back into the settings and turn that off, so let's untick it and then start it playing back. Off it goes and it's still just about managing it, but you might notice here I'm using now 100% processing power. So there's no way I can get anywhere or out of that. It's using 100% of my processor. If I go back and tick the graphics card on again, I press the play button, you'll notice it's now using less processing power. It generally settles down to about 70 to 80 percent because a bit of work there is being done by the graphics card. And Grass Valley is starting to do a bit more of that. They're starting to use the graphics card as well as the CPU to do work. One of the other new things that we have inside of this update, if you go to the system settings, is we also have some options under the importer to do with certain RAW formats. So in Canon RAW and Sony RAW, if I open those up, you can see that it says GPU and there I can tick the GPU to help decode these formats as well. So if I'm using Canon RAW or if I'm using Sony RAW, I can actually make my graphics card decode those as well, which means the CPU can do other stuff. The CPU can do picture in picture effects and slow motion and that sort of thing. This can help just play back the footage, which basically means you're going to get more out of the computer. I and mean, particularly with these new graphics cards, these 1070s and the new ATI cards, there seems to be quite a leap in the performance of graphics cards in the last couple of months. So it makes sense to try and use them as well as trying to use the CPU. The other little thing they've added in is in the GV browser. If you go to a clip in the GV browser, you can right click on it and you've got this new option at the bottom to open the clip with another program. So, for example, I've got a clip here, I want to play it, I could open it with Media Player Classic and play it back. I've got Premiere listed here, it could be anything. I add in another program and then you can right click on it and it'll open it from here and play it in that program, which is nice.